Thanks for joining us for another edition of Weekend Winners. We've got a big 10 race program coming through on Saturday night. A little bit later start time compared to normal, so that gives us plenty of time to pour over all the form. In this edition of Weekend Winners, I plan on catching up with Young Gun, Angus Garrard and Shane Graham. Both drivers have really good books coming through, so I'm keen to get their thoughts on how the night is going to unfold this Saturday night. Angus Garrard has a nice book of drives on Saturday night at LBN Park and we start with race three. He's in the hot seat with us now. Angus, appreciate the time as always. No worries. Thanks for having me, Chris. Subtle delight. You've been with this guy his past three starts. He's just been behind the place getters. He's going well. He just needs that little bit of luck. Yeah, that's right, Chris. He is racing super well. Um, last week, he, we sort of ended up parked out and he fought right to the line. Um, I thought his run was full of merit. Um, we come up with a better draw this week, I think, and it looks like there could be a bit of speed there, so that'll definitely suit him. OK, well, that was an interesting point I wanted to raise with you. Are you happy with the draw? Two off the second row, drawn to follow out an in-form horse and a go-forward horse in Virgil. Surely this race is going to generate tempo. Yeah, I think it looks that way, Chris. Um, there's a fair few speedy beginners off the front, um, and the quicker they go, the more it's going to suit us. So, you know, if they get down sort of... 52s, even 51s, it's going to suit us. Just looking at that front line and horses that are likely to go forward or possess gate speed, Lombo Heaven, Virgil, Paravani, Rock and Roll Classic. So they're going to be running along early, you would imagine? Yeah, it looks that way. OK, so you think he's a good chance, Subtle Delight, just needs that little bit of luck? Yeah, I think so. All right. Race number four on Saturday night. This is the open, and this should be a ripper. Unfortunately, we've got the early scratching of Mac Da Vinci, last week's runaway winner. Tommy Lincoln, drawn gate five. I'm sure you'd love to swap draws with Will the Wizard and be on his inside. Yeah, that's right, Chris. Um, but we're probably not drawn in the worst spot. Um, we can probably still find a handy position and hopefully get some cover. OK, well, tell me if I'm wrong here with my line of thinking. Does Will the Wizard lead, you park outside him and then crunch time goes forward, so effectively you might end up one by one? Yeah, I think on paper it looks that way, Chris. Um, we're sort of obliged to go forward and... I think crunch time is as well, so hopefully if um, Will the Wizard holds up and wants to move along, it's going to put us in a good spot turning for home. Yeah, that, that seems like an ideal scenario. If you're sitting 1-1 one, one with the, the two main dangers in front of you, and if they're going to carve one another up, you're going to be in the, a really good spot at the top of the lane. Yeah, for sure. OK. What about a horse like Cardles from Heaven? Uh, he's the only horse off the second row, continues to run really big numbers each and every week. He's another one that's going to be hitting the line hard. So it's a, it's a good open class race. Yeah, correct. And as you mentioned, Cardles from Heaven, he's got super high speed. So if we do run along and he's sort of handy as well, he's going to be pretty hard to hold out. Um, obviously, Northview Hustler from one, he's got good gate speed. He can probably hold a forward spot. Um, it's very even race across the board, really. Yeah, when the field was released earlier in the week, I thought maybe the track record might be in some sort of jeopardy. 50.4 is the track record, co-owned by I'm the Mighty Quinn and Cruz. But given how well Mac Da Vinci went last week and if the, the weather was strong, maybe they might have got close to that mark. Yeah, that's right. Um, I certainly wouldn't rule it out still. Um, like, um, obviously... Uh, uh, our horse has gone really good time and so has Will the Wizard and crunch time's obviously a proven um, speed horse over the mile. So I certainly think we can get close to it. OK. Uh, race number six on Saturday night, Squire. He continues to race really well, ran into a, a very talented horse last week. He's back at 2,138 metres and he's drawn a touch wide. How do you rate his chances? Yeah, it probably makes it a little bit tough, um, especially the 2,100 and from the draw we're sort of probably going to end up a fair way back but in saying that he's been racing super um, wasn't beaten far in sub 52 last week um, so if there is speed on I'm sure he'll be thereabouts. Has he strengthened up Squire? Yeah I think he has Chris um, his last few runs have been awesome um, he's just sort of met a better one each time but sort of take them out he's sort of win them quite easily really. The main dangers are all drawn to your inside. Bombardier, Juge on Street Kid, Blackhawk, Joe, Make My Memphis. They look like they're going to be the major players as far as the market is concerned. Ideally, where would you like to be sitting with Squire? Uh, ideally, you'd be in front, Chris, but um, <laughs> from the draw, that's probably not possible. So 
if we can just be somewhere handy, sort of come to the quarter, maybe with a three wide trail up or something like that, um, I'm sure he'll be in the finish. Okay. Let's move across to race nine. This is a really good race for the mares. Uh, most have a good chance in this race. You're down to drive AJ Breezy Rose. She was able to win here last week, a deserving victory. The draw does make it tough, though, doesn't it? Yeah, it certainly does. Um, as you said, she's been racing super consistent. and She's got really good speed, and she seems to have a fair bit of bottom, too. But from the draw, we're, again, we're probably going to end up a fair way back. But... In saying that, if we do get the right sort of card up, I'm sure she's capable. Okay, well, l let's look at the positives then. It's only a small field. She's only got to be close enough. And if there is a genuine tempo, which I think there will be in this race, if she's close enough, she might be good enough. That's right. She's certainly in with a shot. Okay, well, that's AJ Breezy Rose there in race number nine for Victorian trainer Colin Godden. And the last race on Saturday night, this is the trot, mobile start conditions. Speaking of bad draws, it's probably the only draw you didn't want, the inside of the second line with Sir Fahrenheit. Yeah, that's right, Chris. Um, certainly not ideal, um, drawn on the back of Father Christmas there, but um, he's been racing super well. His last few runs have been awesome. Um, so if we can sort of get a bit of luck there, I'm sure he can take it. Majestic Simon's the class runner of this field, and he's got a front row drawer, and we all know how much gate speed he possesses. But... Do you think he's struggling for, for confidence right now, Majestic Simon? Yeah, he's probably not so much um, low on form. As you said, it's probably just confidence. He's sort of still running some big races without sort of looking impressive. So I think sort of back to the mobile, he's sort of off an even mark with everyone. He's still going to be very hard to beat. Okay. Strong book of drives as always for you on a Saturday night. Which one do you like at this early stage? Um, sort of hard to pick one out of them, Chris. We all sort of need a bit of luck, but Tommy Lincoln's probably my best. Okay, Tommy Lincoln, race four, and he is number five. Angus, as always, appreciate the time. We'll see you in action on Saturday night. No worries. Thanks, Chris. Leading driver Shane Graham has five drives on Saturday night, so it's a high five for him, and he starts in race one with Glen Eagle Warrior. He's in the hot seat with us now. Shane, appreciate the time. Glen Eagle Warrior, he was able to return to the winner's circle last time out. Can he go on with it now? Um, you know, you'd like to think so, but, you know, from the draw, it's probably going to be a bit tough um, out there in Barrier 7 over the short trip. I was thinking you might be able to roll forward here, boss and bully arrivals, but uh, I'm sensing that won't be the case. Yeah, look, if he sort of gets out, all right, we'll, we'll go forward, but he's not, like, explosive. He gets out good without being explosive, so, um, you know, we'll probably have to weigh it up and see what, what goes forward inside of us and make the decision at the time. How much confidence will he take from that last start win? I know he's a horse that you've always had a bit of time for, so the fact that he's back in the winner's circle, will that give him a bit of a boost moving ahead now? Yeah, definitely. He, um, you know, I, I do really like him and he's um, he's done a good job and, you know, he, he has won quite a few races and when he's, uh, when he's in form, he, he sort of holds it, you know, so um, that win will give him good confidence and I think he'll, you know, he'll be even sharper this week. Is Bitcoin the horse to beat from his good draw? I'd say so. Look, he's just, you know, a model of consistency. He's, um, you know, he's, he's tough. He can, you know, he does work or he can sit sprint. So um, he's the main danger probably. All right. Well, let's move across to race three. This is a really competitive lineup here. You're down to drive Rock and Roll Classic. You've been with this guy. He's passed two, and he's been really sharp. Barrier five, does it look a little sticky, given that there's speed to your inside? Yeah, yeah, it probably, um, you know, it would have been nicer to draw inside a couple of those quick beginners. But, um, you know, like last week, we sort of didn't look like he'd find the front off uh, Nürburgring either, but he did, so you never know what can happen. Is he a nice horse to drive? He's a lovely, big, powerful-looking horse, and uh, he, he looks like uh, he'd be a bit of fun to be sitting behind. Yeah, no, he is. He's, um, you know, he's he's got beautiful manners, and um, you know, he always does his best. So, no, he's nice to drive. Okay, just with that tempo in that race, Lombo Heaven, Virgil, Paravani, and your guy, Rock and Roll Classic, can all run the gate. Who do you think will be in front by the uh, end of the first section? Yeah, look, it's it's um, like you said, they can all run it. Um, I suppose it. It, uh, it's all up to probably the best drawer and whether Pete wants to let, you know, the outside ones go or I'm sure he's probably got the speed to hold. So it's probably, you know, it's up to him on what he decides. OK, race number four. This is the Open. This looks a fantastic race. 
You were originally down to drive Mac Da Vinci last week's runaway winner. Unfortunately, he's been scratched, but you've picked up a great drive here in Cardles from Heaven. There looks like there's still going to be really strong speed. Will the Wizard, Tommy Lincoln, crunch time. Small field is going to suit Cardles from Heaven, and week after week, he just continues to clock really big numbers. So do you still rate him as a winning chance? Yeah, I think so. You know, it was um, disappointing that the other bloke was scratched, but, you know, I was fortunate to pick up the drive on Cardles, and... Um, I think even last week, even, you know, like he sort of got beaten a fair way. His sectionals were as good as anyone in the race. So, um, you know, the small field and especially over the mile, I think he's um, he's only got to be close enough to him and he'll still give him a good shot. OK, let me pick your brain here with some possible scenarios. Will the Wizard, does, does he hold if he finds the front first? Um, I think so, you know, they generally... Um, Pete don't hand up too often, and Will the Wizard, he hasn't sort of really handed up over a mile, so I'd imagine that's what would be happening. OK, you don't see Crunch Time getting the lead at any point? Um, I can tell you afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Beforehand, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought so. OK, well, that, that race will generate good tempo, so that's certainly going to help Cardles from heaven. Let's go across to race eight. This looks really open, this mare's race, and this is all important being the final leg of the quaddy. Witch Hunt, she's racing in really good form. Firstly, can she lead here from gate number five? Yeah, look, she's um, she's getting out better. Um, like, last two starts, she's got off the arm quite good. Um, you know, being over the short trip, you've probably got to go forward again. Um, you know, she she's racing really well without, you know, winning. But, um, you know, she, she's probably knocking on the door to get one soon. It's a big plus for her now that she's sort of rising up to that Saturday night grade, that she's running the gate as well as what she is. Yeah, that's right. You know, like, um, just sort of, she was going through the motions and drawing bad and, you know, started coming here on the Saturday nights and got a couple of good draws. And, yeah, she's, she's fired off the arm good and... She, um, you know, last week we handed up, but the week before she held the front. So she's, um, you know, not a one-trick pony, so that helps her. OK. And race nine, another race for the Mares. Total Diva is your drive. Did you have the choice between Total Diva and Waz Firebug? Um, yes and no. Um, I probably could have stayed with Bug, but I've been driving Diva um, the last couple of times. Her and Bug have met, um, met each other, so I just stayed with her. Just um, not that she's you know like bad to drive or anything but she does have a few little tricks and that so i've just stayed with her mainly for that okay you got speed to your inside where do you see yourself landing yeah look um judging by the way that these all these mares met last time um i'd imagine the two will lead and um we'll have to just slot across and if cover comes it comes otherwise you know if it doesn't she'll be parked out okay good book of drives for you on saturday night which one are you most keen on at this early stage um Probably just Cardles from Heavens, probably, um, you know, it's it's a tough night, but um, probably Cardles. OK, race four, number eight. Shane, as always, appreciate the time. We'll see you in action on the weekend. No worries. Thanks, Chris. As always, a big thanks to both Angus and Shane, and we wish them the very best of luck on Saturday night. Time now for a good thing. I'm going to take the lead of Shane Graham. He was keen on the chances of Cardles from Heaven. I was really keen on this guy last week. He didn't disappoint, so I'm going to double down. Race four, number eight, Cardles from Heaven. I'm expecting a stack of speed in this race, and he can be strong at the finish. The small field is going to suit. So race four, number eight, the Cardles from Heaven. That's our best bet. Remembering, if you are having a gamble this weekend, please do so responsibly. We'll see you trackside the first of ten, just after six o'clock here Saturday night. Thank you.